Hello everyone! <laughs> wow, I'm losing the book. My name is Allison King and today we're going to review Heartless by Marissa Meyer. So first of all, if you don't think you like this book, I'm gonna encourage you to try it anyways. I love fairy tale retellings, but I'm not really into the whole Wonderland world or anything like that, so I wasn't expecting to love this book. Plus I love Marissa Meyer, but like my only problem with her books are the actual fairy tale retelling. Like, I loved uh, Cinder, Cinder, yeah, but I didn't like the Cinderella parts of it because it just felt like so predictable and everything. But this book, just, I love it. It is beautifully written. It's heart wrenching. You will become heartless at the end of it. It's just, it's so wonderful. The characters are so lovable. I think some of these characters are now my favorite characters. There's so many twists and turns and things that like even though you know what's gonna happen at the end with her becoming the queen of hearts it still like shocks you and grabs you so if you haven't read it you absolutely need to besides okay i'm gonna give this one to my friend so we'll get it ah! we'll get it naked it's beautiful it's very beautiful i i loved it and what's really cool about this book is I don't usually read audiobooks because they're so slow and I enjoy it, but usually like people have a monotone voice that's like, hello, my name is Rebecca, because Rebecca read this, and I like this book because, so I just feel really awkward trying to enjoy a story that way, and, but this audiobook was just beautiful. I love all the voices that Rebecca Solar gave to every single character from the the hair to the hatter to everything else. It was just so beautifully written. It was such a good book and I guarantee that you guys read it. I give it a nine and a half out of ten because I did have some issues with it and towards the end I didn't like it as much and not just because of the sadness just kind of oddities if that makes sense. I don't want to tell you if you haven't read the book so yeah on to the spoilery section goodbye if you have not read this beauty i will see you soon okay well hello everyone who's read the book if you haven't read the book stay away i absolutely loved this book except for the ending okay the part that i didn't like was the three sisters was just weird and I feel like, like, I've read mythology books and things like that, but I usually understand and I'm not creeped out by everything that's going on. And this, this idea of these three sisters who are wearing these masks and they want to take some of Hatter's time and all that, it was just kind of odd. Like, I, it didn't feel like it fit with the rest of the story, which I know we have, like, a magical bird that transforms into an executioner and all that and the rook and the king and like animals and I loved the croquet thing because that was such like wonderland and everything that I had watched and was afraid of as a kid. The Cheshire Cat, Cheshire Cheshire, cracked me up throughout this entire book. Why do I keep petting it? I loved just how he just randomly appeared and then like he went to Margaret Merle and he just sat on her head and the Jabberwock came after him. The Jabberwock was such a nice addition to this book because I'm not usually one who reads like romantic books and enjoys like oh will she choose him or will she choose her fate but the Jabberwock added this like intensity of like people are going missing, people are dying, what is its plan of attack, what's going on. I completely guessed that Peter Peter's wife had something to do with it but I thought that Peter Peter was like trapping the the Jabberwock and he was using it to hunt down people who he thought was I guess like high society he was so creepy but like so amazing like when I was reading it I was like Kath stay away from him I loved the food aspect of this book like all of Marissa Meyer's writing is just beautiful but I loved having things related to food and seeing the joy that was in Kath while she was making food because we kind of see her relationship with Mary Ann and everything but we don't really ever see her like truly happy with the things like in court and everything like when she goes to the ball dressed in the red gown everything is just kind of 
it just seems like she has to do her duty for everything and it's hard for her to enjoy, just enjoy life and have fun and all that jazz. So I really enjoyed being able to see her that way and be able to see how much she loves food because I mean I love to eat but I don't usually bake and I want to like bake everything now. The Jabberwock thing surprised me, the sisters surprised me. Also the heart thing, like I knew that Jess, it had to be something with Cap because why was he, why didn't he want to tell her? Because I thought maybe he had to do something with Peter Peter or take over hearts or the king or something. And it was, it was interesting. I still, I want to know though why we can rip out her heart and not save Jess. I cried like a baby when that happened. I knew it was coming when she walked in and saved stupid Marianne, who I loved Marianne until that scene where Jess and Kath come back after they were kissing at the Trico well, and they're just sitting there, and they're all happy, and they're like, oh, we're gonna do the bakery and everything, and she told her parents. Marianne, that's like the worst best friend thing that you can do to tell her parents after everything. And, ugh. I literally had to put the book down for a minute and just sit there and just deal with my emotions. Because I was so mad at Jess for saying that he put like a charm under her. Because if he said like she kidnapped her, at least she could say like I fell in love with him. Maybe I have Stockholm Syndrome or something. But now you took away Kat's ability to, um, Kat's ability to even talk and try and change things. And then I was like, crap, 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 is he gonna try and steal her heart? I love, and it was so hard because like I know if a man made me fall in love with him and then he was like I came here to steal your heart I would probably not hang out with him anymore but Chest is so sweet and just wonderful that I was like don't don't care just go through with it the king I've heard I've watched a lot of reviews on booktube and everything and a lot of people did not like him and they found him very irritating I found him kind of I don't want to say annoying, but I almost felt bad for him because you see that he really cares about Kath and I don't think he understands that she doesn't love him back. Like he has this idea that she's this perfect woman and it's almost like unrequited love and I just, I feel bad for him. Like he's trying so hard to woo her with these badly written poems which crack me up so much and these balls and all these things and he's trying so hard and like even when she was like a woman prefers a long courtship she doesn't like to just be asked to engage he just he wants to make her happy and i understand that he's like foolish and afraid and everything but i feel like i want to say i'm like kath or um mary ann or not really mary ann because she irritated me at the end or um just like would i be afraid I don't know. I mean, I have never been in this situation, but imagine like a gigantic Jabberwock coming in. Would you be the king or would you be Kath? And I think like you could see there were other players that may. I thought the looking glass thing was very interesting. How Jess and Hatter passed through. I wanted to hear a little bit more about Jess' situation though, because when they were going through that maze through the whole night and then into the day and they had to find the way to get out and solve the riddle. I was like, why why are they being so weird to Hatter when they were like apparently really nice to Jess? And maybe I'm a little morbid. Usually I'm like, save all our characters at all costs. But when they were like, Raven will kill Jess, I was like, let's just kill Raven now. I love him, but let's just kill him now. Do not kill Jess. Jess, like, I knew I was gonna like him. I knew it. It was almost like the Locks books where you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, this kid. I, I know I'm gonna like him. Okay, if you've seen Rain, I loved that scene where he talks about the first instance of is a raven like a writing desk? And he, I think he says, because it has a few rough notes and then he lets all the note papers in there and everybody else in their black and white gowns are just standing there and you see Cap just completely turn and just laugh and giggle and have so much fun and I just I remember that part in rain where the feathers are coming down and she's dancing and it was just so beautiful and I loved it and 
One of the things I liked about this is that I kind of, I understood the world from Wonderland, the books, but she, she kept the integrity of it, but she also made it seem not weird. Like just a random frog is walking around like, and the lion and the tea party was an excellent scene. I was like, Kath, just let Jess take your place as the performer, but she had to go do that. And the macarons and just the mock turtle, the mock turtle thing kind of freaked me out. I felt so bad for him, but I was like, oh no, everybody's gonna think that your pumpkin did it. And I just, I loved this story. I had such a fun ride between reading it. Part of me wanted to like take the book and read it myself. And the other part was like, I need to read the audiobook because it's just so wonderful. And I think if you need a book to get you back into reading, like I've just been picking up so much after this, even though I kind of have a book hangover, you really need this book. It's going to make you cry. It's going to make you laugh. But I love these characters. I wish there was a series, but I, it's been a long time since I've just been fully invested in a story like this. So I hope you enjoy it. I would highly recommend. Bring a box of tissues and I will see you later. Goodbye.